everybody, welcome to the PRC Express Workshops. Today we're going to be talking about the right way to network. So we're going to be giving you some networking tips, basics, some advice to follow, and then kind of wrap up with a couple of questions. Um, and so today we're going to talk about what we hope that you learn from this presentation. We're going to dive into our quick five tips. So five tips to kind of maximize your knowledge of networking and how to utilize that. We'll talk about next steps, so some things you can do within the Career Center to kind of help support you to build these skills, and then we're going to have a couple questions, common questions that we get to kind of give you some additional details about the process. So for your learning outcome, we hope today out of the presentation that you understand the skills needed to build meaningful connections in a professional setting. Um, so we're going to be talking about different ways that you can do that. And so each of these presentations is related to three or more career-related competencies that are associated with career readiness, meaning that employers really look for these skills um, that kind of show you that you are um, ready to be a professional. So here's the three that we're focusing on today. So career management, understanding your career, oral and written communication, and then critical thinking and problem solving. So our first tip, um, this may sound ridiculous, but we want to make sure that you know yourself. And so really what that means is to kind of be able to answer these questions. So you want to know what are your goals, what are your interests, and what are you really good at? This will really help you develop an understanding of how to best network in professional settings. What are you interested in pursuing post-graduation? So are you interested in graduate school? Are you interested in full-time work? What current connections do you already have? So it's really good to think about your network already. Some of us don't tend to think about our family and friends, but those can be really powerful connections. So you may already have a really strong professional network that you just haven't tapped into yet. And then what networking situations are you most comfortable in? So people really vary how they want to engage in networking, whether that be in person, face-to-face, -face, or potentially even connecting with one of our professional mentors through our database and doing that virtually or going on LinkedIn. So you just want to know where do you feel most comfortable. And then in general, you want to be prepared to have an elevator speech. So when we say elevator speech, that really just means a brief kind of summary about who you are and why you're interested in either that person or the organization. Um, and so once you kind of know what you want to do, then it's a good idea and know yourself. It's a good idea to develop a strategy that you want to implement for your networking. So you want to figure out your end goal. What are you hoping to get, whether that's information on a career path or a connection to a certain position. Um, practice that elevator speech. So you really want to make sure that you feel comfortable saying that and communicating that. And then if you haven't built a LinkedIn, we really encourage you to build LinkedIn. It is a great professional network, really easy to set up. You can connect with um, alumni of Florida State, you can connect with different professionals really across the country. So you want to make sure that your LinkedIn is up to date. And then you want to find someone that potentially can be a mentor to you. And so that can be done, again, at formal networking events, but also just through conversations with faculty, staff, um, your supervisors, whoever, really find somebody that you feel a good connection with that can kind of help support you throughout your career journey. Um, just be aware of the campus resources. So we're going to touch a little bit on the programs that are available to you. And then just know where to find those opportunities. So here in the Career Center, we do a lot of different events focused around networking. Um, and our career liaisons are a great resource for you. So you just want to be aware of the events on campus that you can potentially attend. Our third tip. So this is more if so you have a strategy, you know yourself, you're ready to go. These are kind of our tips for when you're actually at a networking event or if you're networking with someone informally um, you know, at a meeting or coffee, something like that. So it's really important to introduce yourself, shake your hand, um, do a formal handshake, and also always try to take note of that person's name um, and address them by their formal title. So if they say, hi, I'm Dr. Blah Blah, you want to repeat that back to them, not Blah Blah, but <laughs> okay. Um, you want to make sure that you're um, dressed professionally. So if you're at a networking event, you want to make sure that you feel comfortable in what you wear, but you're also in a professional dress. So that really ranges from business casual to business professional. Um, I think what's really important in networking to remember is that a lot of people don't enjoy the process either. So it may be awkward to start that conversation, but be yourself, be comfortable, bring up topics that are kind of safe. So that takes us down to the discuss safe topics. So you know you want to avoid talking about things that may be controversial or somebody may get heated about in a networking situation. So a lot of safe topics, and we mentioned some of them there, but weather is always a great way to start, especially in Florida where it rains all the time food, education, um, your background, it's a really good idea when you're in a networking situation to ask open-ended questions. So rather than just a yes or no, something where they can kind of expand and share additional experience. Um, 
And then you want to make sure that you kind of read the social cues. So in a formal networking situation where there may be a lot of people around, you want to make sure that if you notice that they're trying to go talk to somebody else, or maybe they want to go refill you know, their drink or get more food, you just want to allow those people to kind of come in and out of the conversation. It definitely will be a little uncomfortable at first, especially those more formal ones, but you just want to keep at it and you want to make sure that you're kind of practicing those elevator speeches, being comfortable talking in different social situations, and that'll really help you be successful. Um, so our fourth tip, this is about things to avoid. So we talked about the great things you want to do. This is a little bit more about some of the stuff that you don't want to bring up in a networking um, situation. And so really important um, that you're ready to have a conversation, you're ready to speak about yourself, why you're there. There's nothing worse than if you're at a networking event, you go up to try to talk to somebody and they are also kind of awkwardly don't know how to talk, it makes it very uncomfortable. So be prepared to speak. Um, and then we talked about professional dress, so you want to make sure you always represent yourself professionally at networking um, opportunities. You definitely um, want to avoid directly asking for a position. So you don't want to walk up to you know, an employer or an alumni or somebody and say, hi, you know, I'm a junior, blah, 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 what jobs do you have available for me, right? You always want to start the conversation asking about maybe how they got started, what opportunities in the company come for recent college graduates and make that conversation a little bit more natural. Um, we talked about watching your time with people. You just want to make sure you're considerate of that time. Um, and then really important that at the end of the event, you ask either the networking opportunity, if you meet them for coffee, ask for a business card. Um, a pro tip, if you're at an event, have a pen. You can jot down some notes really quickly on the back of the business card. So you can do this at career fairs, at any opportunity where you're networking with people. That way you can remember um, things about them to personalize your thank you note. And so you always want to ask for either a business card, an email, their LinkedIn, a way for you to connect with them afterwards and follow up. Because a really important part of networking is starting to build that connection and that relationship over time. So you want to make sure you have some details to kind of put in there. Last but not least, so this brings us to our last tip, which is always follow up. And so we talked about the business card and taking notes. Um, on LinkedIn, super, super important that if you're sending a LinkedIn request, that you customize it. So when you press connect on LinkedIn, it's gonna have a, just a default message that says, you know, Joe Schmo would like to connect with you on LinkedIn. What you wanna do is go ahead and personalize that message. So you wanna say, hi, it was great meeting you at blank at the event. Um, I'd really love to talk to you a little bit more and remind them who you are and kind of personalize that note. That will really help your chances of them accepting that connection. And if you do send thank you notes, which we do encourage you to do, that's a great way to demonstrate your professionalism. We ask that you customize them. So just meaning those notes that you took on the back of the business card or in your portfolio, you use those to really make your thank you note customized rather than just thank you for your time. You said it was great discussing blank, blank, and blank with you. So as much as possible, you want to customize that. And then set a reminder to check back in. People are really busy. We have a lot going on. Everybody has, you know, is pulled in a lot of different directions. So when possible, you can set a little reminder on your phone, on your calendar, and just check back in with them. That is really important to kind of start building that relationship naturally. So you just want to make sure you make follow-up a priority and part of the process. So some next steps. So we talked about in the beginning the importance of kind of seeing what your current network is. So really assess and kind of identify those people that may be helpful for you in helping support your career goals. We talked about an elevator switch elevator speech, really important that you not only create it, but that you practice it so it becomes natural to you. Um, and you can do that, you can make changes to it depending on the situation, but just being able to quickly introduce yourself and why you're at an event is really important. And then each semester we have a ton of events for you to help support your networking and your job search. So we have career fairs, networking events, information sessions where employers are there present for you. So you just wanna go to those events before it's crunch time for you, before it's senior year and you're looking for a job or looking to get into graduate school, it's really great to do this stuff earlier so you feel more comfortable in it later on. So we're gonna wrap up with a couple questions that you may get um, that we often um, wanna make sure, these questions will make sure that you understand the content. So some topics that you wanna avoid during networking conversations, so this is a really common question we get. Mostly you wanna think about avoiding controversial um, topics, so things like politics, religion, anything where you may think people are very strongly opinionated and could potentially you may have a conflict in values, you want to try to avoid those in those um, you know, formal networking situations. Um, and what is an example of small talk? So small talk is the stuff we talked about with safe topics, 
weather, food, your job, what movies you saw that weekend, so kind of safe topics that are really easy for you to talk about. And then when is an appropriate time to follow up with a connection made at a networking event? So really, um, it's up to you, but we do encourage you to follow up pretty promptly. So within 48 hours, if you can send a follow up while it's still fresh on your mind, and you can put those details into it to kind of take it to the next level, we recommend that you do that. And again, if it's someone you're super excited about, you can follow up quicker, but we, you know, we kind of recommend within 48 hours. So that wraps up um, our presentation on the right way to network. Um, we have additional topics available to you that we hope you check out, and we look forward to seeing you in the cruiser.